we're currently surveying a number of important topics that have to do with very large-scale adaptations. And I've chosen these because these each involve fundamental processes that must be explained in terms of individual advantage. Last time we looked at sexual selection and we saw how it benefits males to, in a way, be boy toys and to have long extravagant plumage in certain kinds of birds. If that gives the female a chance to find out his quality and thus have better offspring. Today we want to get even more fundamental than sexual selection and ask about sexual reproduction itself. Up until now when we've looked at meiosis, Mendelian genetics, formation of gametes and all that, we just took it for granted that sexual reproduction took place. But today I want to ask, why is there sex? There's enormous diversity in sexuality across different organisms. A number of different species have separate males and females. There are other organisms that are both male and female at the same time, like these earthworms. And there are other lineages where only females exist. The entire species consists of nothing but females. And these deloid rotifers have been asexual for over one and a half billion years. So, what do we mean by sex? Well, in a biology class, what we mean by sex is the fusion of genes from more than one individual. That's what happens at fertilization. But what I want to get at today is that reproduction does not inevitably involve sex. Reproduction can also take place through the process of mitosis. Dandelions, which are quite common around here, you see their flowers, the first things to poke out in the spring, yellow flowers everywhere, and the little seeds flying through the air. Dandelions are asexual. The seeds are genetically identical to the parent cells. So this plant has produced mitotic cells, diploid cells that will develop into seeds that then become baby dandelions. Insects do this as well. Aphids, at times, this leaf insect, this particular kind of creepy crawly here, are all known occasionally to clone themselves, where instead of producing a haploid egg, the female produces a diploid egg that develops perfectly normal into a daughter who can likewise have diploid eggs. So, why is there sex? Bacteria are the best place to start on this topic because bacteria routinely reproduce without sex. Bacteria do have sex, though, but sex in bacteria is not directly related to reproduction. So, first let's look at bacterial reproduction. We've seen this before, cell division of bacteria, so first you have your circular chromosome in the bacteria, then there's DNA replication, so that's chromosomal replication here. The cell walls elongate, pinch off, and now you've got two identical daughter cells, genetically the same as the original. There's no sex. These are identical to the mother cell. So that's reproduction without sex. But bacteria do have sex. In bacteria it's called conjugation and it doesn't involve reproduction. So here we have our two separate bacteria, and they've constructed a tube that connects the two through which they'll exchange genetic material. So here we have a schematic of this situation. So let's say this individual has a blue chromosome and this individual has a red chromosome. They construct their tube that connects the two, and then they pass through portions of their chromosomes to each other, and as a result, they're both now essentially like a hybrid in that the blue individual still has most of its own original chromosome, but it's got part of the red chromosome in it and vice versa. So they have fused genetic material from two separate individuals, which is sex, but there's the same number of bacteria before and after, so there's no reproduction involved. Now, when we think about sex, what we want to keep in mind is that it's a puzzle for a reason. It's a puzzle because sexual reproduction has inherent costs. First, 
Let's think about courtship. And you may be dating somebody, you might be looking around, and you know, there's a certain amount of effort involved. And guys may be fighting over the same girl, right? And they may be trying to show off, trying to impress the girl. There's a whole bunch of energy going into courtship. Everybody has to say, yes, I'm the man of your dreams, and you're the one for me, and all that sort of stuff. That takes time and energy. If they could just reproduce asexually, they'd save themselves all that time. Another problem is if you can only reproduce with a partner, you may have problems finding a mate. So let's say you're a coconut that's washed up on shore. You're a happy coconut. You found a nice place to live. But you're the only coconut on the island. And there's nobody to exchange your pollen with. So you're stuck. Okay. So plants often need a partner. Most animals need a partner. Okay. Now, there are advantages then to not having sex. If you're asexual, you can do it all by yourself. You can either form your, um, you can form your gametes through mitosis without having to have pollen or an egg from somebody else. And also, a lot of asexuals simply split in two, like the sea anemone. It grows and grows and it reaches a certain size. Right, now there's two of us. So they don't need sex in order to reproduce. They have an advantage in many situations. We don't really have to emphasize this too much, except be careful out there, because there are any number of sexually transmitted diseases. Again, this is not a risk that would be suffered by an asexual organism that can simply decide, okay, I'm gonna have a mitotic egg, put it in the womb, and get things going. Whereas with humans, social species with lots of partners, there's always a risk of picking up some disease. But the big, big problem with sex and why it's in an evolutionary biology class is because of this fundamental process that we covered in class earlier. That's that central process to Mendelian genetics, which is meiosis. It's the formation of the gametes. And let me present it to you now as a puzzle in the following way. We're used to thinking of a diploid dad and a diploid mom. They produce their gametes and then the gametes fuse to produce an offspring, okay? But now let's consider what would happen in an asexual organism. Asexual organism is a female, and instead of bothering with meiosis, she simply produces an egg, which will become an offspring through mitosis. And if we count the amount of her genetic material that's passed on from her to her offspring, it's all there. 100% of her genes get passed on to each one of her offspring. Now, this looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Why is it that a sexual female would wish to discard half of her genetic material in order to mate and reproduce with sex? This is called the twofold cost of meiosis, and this has been one of the biggest question marks in evolutionary biology for the last half century.